Fred here from the Gun Geek Channel, back with the plate of truth, all cleaned up from our oil test. You may ask yourself, self, what am I going to put on there now? Well, cleaners. But you're saying, well, you already cleaned everything. The, the plate of truth is pretty clean there. Why would you put cleaners? How are you going to test? What are you going to test? Well, what I'm testing is whether any of these cleaners etch or discolor the metal. Now, all of these are exclusively bore and, and gun cleaners, with the exception of Simple Green. I remember watching a, an Armory video from Armors of America or something like that. And the guy in the video, and this is a professionally done video, recommended Simple Green to clean a lot of the parts. So I, I tried it on some internal parts when I was uh, stripping down a couple of guns. And it actually is an amazing degreaser. And does a very good job of, of getting oil and gunk and dirt off gun parts. So I'm throwing that in there. Simple Green. So let me run down all the the individual cleaners. I'll be trying out in this test the REM 40X bore cleaner, the REM bright bore, the outers foaming bore cleaner, Hoppy's number nine, Hoppy's Elite, Smith and Wesson bore and action cleaner, outers nitro solvent, the gun slick foaming bore cleaner, Powder Blast by Break Free, M Pro 7, and Simple Green. And I'll show you how I will fairly apply it to the Plate of Truth. Well, I have my list here of where each item should go on what square. And I have my Q-tips. And I have my cleaners. So for Number three is the REM 40X bore cleaner, and I will grab a Q-tip and some cleaner, apply it to the Q-tip. I don't want to do this over here because I don't want to get spillage onto the wrong square. But I'll go ahead and apply that onto the Q-tip, and this goes onto square number three. You can see. I'm going to put it on exactly like I did the oil and just put a film onto the complete square. I'm not left handed and I got the camera on that side so I'm blocking what my hand is doing but you can see how I did that. You can see the one wet square there. And that's about how you would apply it. You know, if you were running this down the bore on a on a mop, that's this is what's happening inside the bore. You're you're wetting it down. And we'll move on to the next one. Next is Rem Bore Bright. And of course this is a spray, so I'm going to have to spray the Q-tip over a garbage can. And I'll go ahead and be careful not to get any kind of spillage. This is a little bit wet. I'm going to um, dab a little bit of this off. I want to try to get be fair and have the same amount on each one. Same thickness. And let me get I'll do it on this side with my left hand so you can see how careful I'm trying to be getting to the edge but not over. And equally applying it 
with the same thickness to each square. There's the next one. Next. Well, it'd be kind of boring watching me put this on every square, so I'm going to cut now. And when I'm almost done, I will cut the camera back on. So there you have it. We have everything applied to the 12 product products. I left the the four on each side empty so I can handle them. One thing I've noticed is number six. Let me try to zoom in on number six there. It has a white film on it. And that would be the barrel buster. Let's zoom back out so I can get that in the screen here. That would be this guy right here, the barrel buster. Foaming board cleaner. Left a, an interesting film. This is by CVA, which is a, you know, for muzzle loaders, even though it says for all modern guns. So I'm assuming that it can be used on anything. It says all modern firearm safe for all and it's not supposed to contain any acid or ammonia or anything like that so that's why I've included it in the test even though I don't own any muzzle loader so there's a slight film there I also noticed that number 16 which is the powder blast by break free basically dried after you know I put on the a film of the stuff on there but it just dried up and I think that's part of the way that it's designed you, you spray it on it knocks off everything and then evaporates number 14 which is the outers nitro solvent is sort of doing the same thing it, it's drying up and uh, of course number 18 is the simple green and the, I've heard a lot of rumors that Poppy's number nine, if left on, which is number seven for any significant amount of time, can damage finishes. Um, I, I remember someone saying that it messed up the finish on their, um, what's that really good pistol? I can't remember the name. I'm br totally brain farting on camera, as usual. On um, I'm going to break and, and come back after I look it up. Of course, another reason why I'm doing this is because it can harm the finish of certain guns. I, I've heard more than once that someone messed up the finish on their SIG. I don't know what it is about finishes with SIG. They're supposed to be, and, I, and uh, I'm not saying they're supposed to be. They they are really the, the cream of the crop of firearms out there, even though they, they could do a little bit better on their finish based on what I've heard from several sources. Um, so if you leave, like... Uh, Hoppies on a SIG for a certain amount of time, you may stain or, or do something strange to the finish. So that, that's really what led me to this test, to just to see if any of these products, if left on a plate for a day or two, would etch or, or do anything to damage this metal. Well. Again, thank you very much for stopping by the Gun Geek channel. Please don't forget I got a contest running. I'll provide the link below. Below. <laughs> Down there. You should check it out. Some good prizes. And I hope you have a good day. Or a good evening. Or a good morning. Whenever you're watching the video.